Good morning booktube and welcome to part three of this Poetry Thursday. We've made our way through a couple of sonnets from Shakespeare, a Christopher Marlowe poem, and now we're going to J.R.R. Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings. So you might be able to tell from the two bits of paper there. Uh, they are poles apart from where they're being chosen, but it is three separate versions, or three different tellings, of the same song. So, without further ado, it took a while to find, by the way, and this is my very battered trade paperback of Lord of the Rings with the damages coming apart there, so it's all, I need to re-adhere that down and reinforce it at some point, but I've had this copy for years, it's HarperCollins, one volume edition with the index and appendices, and it's always been fantastic and reliable, but it is on its way out, <laughs> because I do, I do go through this quite a bit every now and then. But, sorry, from a fiddly moment while I find the first instalment of what we're going to read. So, The Fellowship of the Ring, uh, A Long Expected Party is the chapter title. Uh, in this edition it's page 35, and I'm going to read The Road Goes Ever On and On. I will try not to move into the rhythm that is done by the film, where Gandalf sings it and... Bilbo sings at various points in like a half hum type of tone. So I'll just try and give it a regular straightforward reading if I can. The road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, and I must follow if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way, where many paths and errands meet, and whither then I cannot say. So it's very condensed and very short, and upon choosing this and looking through it and doing a bit of search online, uh, I find there were three versions of it within a book, which I hadn't recalled properly. I know it happened at least more than once, but I couldn't remember there were three. There are a couple of little differences, and the implication is the differences are based off that character and where that character is at that time in the story. So this is Bilbo leaving the Shire. So until it joins some larger way where many paths and errands meet could be deemed within this as foreshadowing of Bilbo going to Rivendell and then the Fellowship going to Rivendell after. Because at that point in time, Bilbo just stays there and is kept safe. There's no, there's no planning beyond that point. He wants to visit the elves again and that's as far as his planning goes. So, and obviously the road being adventure and whatnot. So I think, I think that's quite an obvious bit, but yeah, I think that last bit kind of relates to his attempt at going to Rivendell. So in the second one, this is from Frodo, and this is still the Fellowship of the Ring, but this is Three as Company. So this is Frodo in the company of Sam, uh, Pippin and Merry. The road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, and I must follow if I can, pursuing it with weary feet until it joins some larger way, where many paths and errands meet, and whither then I cannot say. Now I think there is the difference there is. So I'm trying to. Obviously, like an idiot, I took the bookmark out. Yeah, so in the first version, Bilbo is pursuing it with eager feet because it's the adventure that he's commencing upon after many long years of sweet idyll in the Shire following the Hobbit story. But then obviously in Frodo's here, it's the exact same again, but pursuing it with weary feet. So at this point, Frodo's journey's barely begun, but I think he can already tell or has a sense or a feeling that he's in it for a much longer haul. And that it's just pre-foreshadowing of the tiredness, that burden of the ring, I think, is what is being foreshadowed there. But the, the remainder of the poem there remains exactly the same. And then we cast very, very, very far ahead. From that point, we completely skip the two towers. And we jump to nearly 900 pages further along to the Return of the King. Yeah, so in this book it is page 965, and it is the chapter Many Partings. Um, so here it is. 
This is from Bilbo again, so we're going to bookend Bilbo's version first, Frodo's in the middle, Bilbo's at the end. The road goes ever on and on, out from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, let others follow it who can. Let them a journey new begin, but I at last with weary feet will turn towards the lighted inn, my evening rest and sleep to meet. So I think that kind of very perfectly encapsulates that this is not the beginning, this is the end, because rather than being the road goes ever on and on down from the door where it began, it is, which is the same in both Bilbo and Frodo's version, it's now out from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, same line, and I must follow, oh sorry, now, yeah, so now it's now, and I must follow if I can, is now let others follow it who can. Let them a journey new begin, because he's obviously finished, but I at last with weary feet. So we're keeping weary feet, but that position has moved down one line between Frodo's version and Bilbo's version. We'll turn towards the lighted inn, which I think is obviously boarding the ships, leaving Middle Earth, and my evening rest and sleep to meet, and being a ring bearer, Bilbo can now relax. His, his time is done. He's achieved what he's what his part was in the story, and he can come. It can come to an end for him. He can finally meet. But I think that's very, very clever, subtle foreshadowing from the beginning and second, from the first and second version, to then looking back and encompassing what Bilbo's younger Bilbo's journey was and young Frodo's journey was to where it ends. So you have to tip your hat to. Mr. Tolkien, he definitely knew what he was doing. Like I said, that is right near the end. That is only two chapters-ish from the very end where you've got the scouring of the Shire and the Grey Havens and then straight to the appendix. So, yeah, not the penultimate chapter, but the penultimate, penultimate chapter. And that is it for our third instalment. So three three poems, the same poem, but three slightly different, different versions from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Thank you very much, Book Chief.